Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thank you for taking some time today and spending some hangout crafty time with the new Stampin' Blends. So I thought I would bring a project to you. This will be a new card that I have never created before and um, we're going to have some fun with Stampin' Blends. So as you may have heard, Stampin' Up! now has a new set of alcohol markers that are called Stampin' Blends. And I wanted to um, kind of show you a little bit about the markers today. If you have not already heard of them, then they are alcohol markers that are um, in the Stampin' Up! colors, which is really exciting if you like to match all your Stampin' Up! colors. So if you're joining me today, then please feel free to type a comment and say hi and where you're from and also to uh, let me know what you're doing today. And if you have any questions or comments along the way, then please feel free to put them so we can interact together. That's the fun part of doing a YouTube Live. So the alcohol markers are available only for demonstrators and this is the beautiful array of colors that we have and I am just really enjoying working with these markers. I have a little bit of a sample that I would like to share with you. Hey Paula, hi Nancy. Here's a little bit of stuff that I've done so far with the markers. Not much, I just got them in on Friday, but I wanted to uh, kind of show how they work together and blend. So on this example, I have stamped in some dye ink, which is Tuxedo Black from Memento, and we do sell this in our online store at Stampin' Up! This is yellow to green to blue. Thank you, Paula. I'm glad you like it. I saw your sample on um, on Facebook that you created, and it is stunning. You you are such a great color. You're an inspiration to all of us. So that's Miss Paula Dobson. You guys should check out her work. It's beautiful. So this is a way that they blend, and I wanted to bring colors together that we would naturally see blended but also in a way that they are going to work with each other. I've colored the flower as well and the lantern and I have one more card that I created with um, one of the birds and I chose to make this bird look like a robin. I've made this card for a special class so I'm not going to be making this today but I'm going to have this as one of the first projects in a um, in an online course for card making design so that'll be coming up in the next few weeks that there will be um, some kind of information available for that so if you're interested in card making design then stay tuned to my channel I'll make sure to put some things out on my blog at jennystampsup.com and I'll be able to put you lots of information out there so how are these markers different from our stamp and write markers i'm grabbing a stamp and write marker here to show you what the difference is in the size this is a black and a wild wasabi in our regular dye ink hi rita marie i'm so glad for you to join me today this is the new alcohol marker and this is the regular stamp and write dye ink marker and i hope that you can see the difference in the size of the barrel so this is the side view they are they're made like this in this kind of size because this will run off of the table just a little bit this will not run off the table neither will the cap so they're very they're very handy Hi Tiana, thank you for joining me today. So there's lots of colors. These are regular Stampin' Up! colors in the color families that are 
available in the Stampin' Write markers. They're standard colors and not in colors. These are the colors that are going to be around for some time, so you don't have to worry about whether your investment is going to run out and you won't be able to use these colors anymore. What's another thing that's different about these markers that are Stampin' Write versus the Stampin' Blends are that you can use your ink refills for these stamp and write markers because it is made of the same ink that's in your ink pads. These markers, however, are not the same. These are made with special ink. And as far as I know, they are not refillable. So that's going to wait uh, to remain to see how we're supposed to deal with if we want to replace them or refill them. I don't see there being refills because the markers are priced low enough to where you can just buy one marker or you can buy them in a set, which would be the two markers together. And the way the two markers work with the set, I'll get it here where well, you can see, is that each one of the colors has a dark and a light. This would be dark rich razzleberry and light rich razzleberry. And these will work together with blending. I like to blend personally with three different colors. So I would go into this bin here and figure out which color I would want to add as a mid-tone. I would maybe go this way and make this my lightest color and go up to this my darkest color or go the other direction and if I wanted to work with colors that are a little bit more rich and red then I would go this way so you can add them any way you like because you are the artist yes you can just replace them Paula you're right um, with the with just one marker at a time but that works really great if you tend to stick to certain colors like I do I'm really drawn to the blues then I won't have to worry about my reds and my greens running out I can just replace my blues which is another good point these markers are also compared to Copic markers so if you're familiar with working with Copic markers then maybe this will be something that will fall naturally for you um, this is also something these markers are only available for demonstrators so if you are not yet a demonstrator and you have been on the fence and thinking about joining for the discount this is a great time for you to do that if you have a demonstrator that you work with then you can contact your demonstrator in your country and you can ask them how you can join for the discount and be able to order these today is the very last day if you do not have a demonstrator then please consider me and I would love to have you on my team and help you to be able to learn how to use these we're gonna do lots of classes with them so let's start working with them and see exactly what we can do I'm going to use the stamp set that is also part of this purchase this was available for demonstrators as well move the markers over this way so this is a really great stamp set I like how it has all of the open lines and we can use this with a card kit as well which is also part of the premiere so we can use the markers and the stamp set with this project kit this makes 20 cards and these are some really pretty cards I'm really excited to be able to use these they are very flashy in certain areas but not a little overboard flashy I like that good question Barbara Barbara is asking how much is the initial investment to become a demonstrator the demonstrator starter kit is $99 and once you once you go to the to the part of the website Barbara to actually start choosing your items you choose hundred and twenty five dollars worth of product for the cost of only ninety nine dollars and your shipping is free on that order as well 
they're not going to charge you any shipping so if you are used to ordering and you don't have um, you you normally pay like maybe twenty dollars shipping or thirty dollars shipping de depending on the size of your order then you don't have to worry about on this first starter kit order you could order all your stamp sets on wood blocks and it would not cost you any more. <laughs> That's one thing that people um, kind of tend to shy away from wood block or wood mounted stamp sets because it adds to the shipping cost. It's a little bit more heavy. But if that answers your question, then um, if you have any more questions. The deal that's expiring today, Barbara, is the Stampin' Blends. This is the alcohol marker that's only available to purchase from demonstrators, but Stampin' Up! has also made it available for you to put it in your starter kit for new demonstrators. But the offer expires today. It's going to be only good through the end of the day today in the United States. So this is, this is what you can get. These are alcohol markers and they are not the same as our as our regular stamp and write markers that have the dye ink that are refillable. These are alcohol markers that are compared to Copic markers. So if you have used Copic markers, then I can tell you that I have used them in the same way that I have done Copics and they work wonderfully. And we're gonna, we're gonna go through this in just a few minutes on how to use them. It, they're wonderful, they're a great product. And they match all of our Stampin' Up! colors already, which is fantastic. <laughs> I love that fact. Um, Barbara, if you like, you can go over to my website at jennystampsup.com and there is a place on the right-hand side of the website that says, Join My Team. And if you click that, it'll take you over directly to the website where you get your starter kit and you sign up. You don't have to make any further purchases. You can just join for the discount that you get for yourself. Um, and then you can expire and then go back to being a customer. Or you can stay and you can meet a quota and you can get the discount and also be a part of OnStage, which is all the fun a demonstrator could ever ask. So yes, Barbara, if you are interested, I'd love to have you on the team. And if you have any questions, then at the end of the video, you can always contact me by email at jennystampsup at gmail.com. So let's start looking at this kit. The kit that is available to be ordered makes 20 cards and they're in four different styles and everything that we need is in here. We don't have to add anything. I've done a little bit on here already, as you can see. And here's what the Stampin' Blends can do. This is a sample that I made when I was playing with them. There's blending that happens. There's color lifting that you can do, and we're gonna go through all of that in, um, in just a few minutes. So here is what the kit looks like itself. It has components to make all of the different cards and it has envelopes. And one thing that I like about it is look at these envelopes, how they have the gilding on them. And you can even color in some of the envelopes. That's the coolest, isn't it? So this would be for one style of card you don't have to color these in. You could though. There's always that option. There's four of these that have the lovely gold and the pink. Look at the pink. I love the contrast. It's gorgeous. So everything that we need to do the cards that are in the kit is in this kit right here. And I'm going to assume that many of you are already familiar with ordering a Stampin' Up! kit that you know that there's many different things inside the kit and it's all right there for you. You have pieces that are perforated that you just pop out like this. If you have gotten a paper pumpkin kit, then paper pumpkin sets their stuff up similarly. 
Here are the card bases that come inside of it. So I'm taking the time to show you just so you can see exactly how nice these are. Look at the rich colors here, it's beautiful. So we'll make one of these cards and we will, I forgot to show you this. Look at the beautiful sequins. I wish we could sell these in our online store as not being part of the kit because they're so pretty. Some nice tassels and this is gold tape. Let me open it up. One of the designs has the gold tape on it, like washi tape, but it's a gold, gold foil, and that will go on one of the card designs. And there's some baker's twine as well. So let's start stamping. The first thing, and of course, if anybody has any comments or questions as we go, then please put them so that I can answer as much as I can. So when we work with Stampin' Blends that are alcohol markers, one of the things we need to remember is that they are not regular dye ink that we use in our stamp pad. They are, they are different. They are gonna act different. And so if we were to use a standard ink pad, grab a couple, such as classic stamp and pad that is made of dye ink. This is actually archival black, which we, that's the black we sell in our store. And this is not the same ink as what we have in the classic stamp and pad. If you notice that it even says that it's archival, this is a different kind of ink than this is. Here is another kind of ink that we sell, and this is Memento. We do sell it in the Stampin' Up! store. So you can contact your demonstrator and you can purchase it online right now. This ink is the same ink as this, and in, in the respect that it is a water-based ink. This ink is the same as these markers in the respect that it's not water-based. It is made of a different substance and I want to say this is made from alcohol, but I can't, I don't, I'm not sure, so don't quote me on it, but it, what it is, is com this is the same type of ink. It's not water-based ink. Nancy is saying that she loves them and she wants to use them. You are a hobby demo and just can't invest that much into them right now, but they are gorgeous. That's, that is a great point, Nancy. These are not for everybody. There's so many products that we have already in our craft stash that if you follow my channel, then you guys know that I'm a very big advocate of using what you already have in your craft stash. Um, if there comes a point to where you decide that you want to invest in the markers that are the alcohol markers, then that would be something that you can put on your Christmas list maybe. But right now they're only available to order through today. So that's my, um, that's my one thing that I want everybody to know and understand is that you cannot order these until Stampin' Up! releases them to the, to the public at a later date. We're going to make one of the cards that has this little white piece here, and I believe it's going to go on here. I have not read the directions, but I've taken a good look. So is there anybody out there that just jumps in with their feet first like I do and decides that they're going to make something and not read the directions? Would you call that directionally challenged, that I need to stop and read directions? <laughs> So we're going to find all of the components. How about if I just get the instructions out here and we'll have a look. Wrong one. So this is the card that we're going to make. And I've got the white piece out and I'm going to do the stamping now. And one thing to remember is that when you stamp and you use colored alcohol markers that you want to allow their time to dry. Huh. 
<laughs> I think we all have a tendency to to do that, Paula. That's a good point. She's had a few oops along the way and jump in. All right, so this is a very easy kit to put together. We have a couple of birds. And they are really cute. In case you missed it and just joined, this is a card that I created with one of the birds to make it look like a robin. So it's it was really easy to do that. We're going to follow this today and use the pinks and the blues. Of course, you can make the bird look any way you like. Hmm, I don't think I left myself enough room. So I'm gonna flip it. How about that? Do you guys ever do that too? Flip the paper over and give yourself a second shot at it. And I'll be very careful this time and make sure that I give myself enough room for two birds. All right. So while this is drying, this is a good opportunity for me to get my markers out. This is a wonderful stamp set. This can also be stamped in um, Versamark and embossed, and then you can fill it in with watercolor. So this is not a stamp set that is only that you can only use for uh, the stamp and write markers or the stamp and blends. I'll call them blendies. <laughs> I've been affectionately calling them blendies. Where I can change from the directions is I can choose different colors for the birds instead of, I can go in the same style, but I want to match my card base. So we're going to imagine that a pink bird and a blue bird are, um, they, my husband and I call that um, suspended disbelief. <laughs> that you just accept the fact that there's a pink bird and a blue bird and it's not what we would see in real life. And that's fine. That's cool. Let's see. Let's bring some colors together and it doesn't have to just be the two colors, but I don't want to overcomplicate things either. So I want to match the colors of one bird while choosing some colors to work with the other bird. Let's see. Now remembering that the markers come each shade, such as this rich razzleberry is in a light rich razzleberry and a dark rich razzleberry, that they will work together. So let's go with this for now. The other item that I need is the color lifter. What the color lifter does is it is a marker that is just plain uncolored fluid and it pulls back away some of that color that we put down onto the paper. And I can show you that with my example when I find it. Um, also, there is bronze and ivory, which are shades that you can use for skin tones. You don't have to only use them for skin tones, of course, but you, you have that availability there to be able to use them. Right. Okay, so let's see if our piece is dry. I'm betting that it is. All these lovely markers over here. The one thing that I have learned about Copic markers that I have started to apply to the stamp and blends is that you want to give yourself enough color saturation in one place to allow another color to mix on it. If you've done watercoloring, you'll know that once you put out the once you put out the substance that is fluid then when two fluids mix together, then they are going to easily mix together. But if you have something that's not quite dry, not quite wet, mixed with something that's also 
not enough fluid, then these are gonna struggle to mix together. So you do want to saturate the paper and we'll see how that works in just a few minutes. But don't be worried about any kind of a bleed through. So make sure that if you have a surface that you are trying to protect, then this is when the grid paper comes in handy. I also, underneath my grid paper, I have a piece of fun foam that's a large piece here. I do too, Paula. Paula likes the fact that it's red rubber and it is, red rubber is my favorite. It's a lot easier. Okay, so let's get started on this little birdie right here and we're gonna make this one the pinkish purple. So I'm gonna get my other colors moved out of the way. This is the one marker that you wanna keep handy. This is the color lifter. So that's going to be something that you're going to probably use quite frequently. When I start coloring, I like to go with the light colors and work myself down into the deep colors because I can start off with giving highlights and I can work with something that can be taken right back off. The lid on these markers is quite, it, it snaps, it's quite tight. So I'm gonna, I have to apply some real pressure to get them off, which is good because we know they're not gonna dry off. And they have two tips. This one is, is a small, um, I guess you wanna call it a fine point or bullet point. And this is the brush side and it's significantly larger. So this will allow you to push and if you can see that the tip kind of definitely moves over and drags and on the bullet side there's not much give to it at all it stays very firm and it allows you to make a very fine line well fine for markers I prefer to use this one so far unless it's a very large area so I'm going to color in one section of the bird at a time because I don't want the ink to dry up before I'm able to get blending. So I'm going to work with the top of the bird on his head. And it, one thing to remember when you're using any kind of coloring is leave yourself a little bit of white space. If you have some white highlights, then they will only enhance your work give you a much more natural look. It's whatever look you're after. Okay, so I'm saturating without oversaturating. Let's have a look on the back. As you can see, it does show through. And this is just the lightest color. So I'm going to replace the lid every single time because I don't want my markers to dry out. So this is when I would choose to bring the marker and if I want the dark color on the outside of where my colored area is, then my own personal method, and trust me, this is not the only way to do it, is to start from the outside, apply the marker, and pull in, just like a dot. And what it's going to do is give a natural look and it's also going to keep me from making any big marker circles. Um, for lack of better language, it's just, it feels more natural and it feels more right to me. So I'm gonna take this and the only place that I'm touching it is just down to that line. And they will bleed a little bit out to the outside stamped edge. So I'm going to add this. I'm just touching and pulling. I've heard this technique called feathering. So if you can see how it's, how it's coming in, then I'm gonna close that back up and then I'm coming back to my light, okay? And then I'm going to take and do the same thing. And what this is allowing me to do is to bring that dark that I just added along the edge and I'm blending it in. 
it's going to actually pick up that dark color and it's going to bring it in and it will be a more blended and a more fluid look. This is nothing special that I'm doing and as you can see look at how it's already lightened up the outside by doing this. I could use this other side if I like but I feel personally like I have more control when I use the bullet nib. Since this piece is finished in the head area then I'll use the same one to go down. Hi Tanya, uh, thanks for joining me today. Yes, the markers are wonderful. They are only available through today. So if you're interested, then if you purchase the starter kit, you are able to get them in your starter kit. And we'll go back into that a little bit later if you have any questions. So I'm going to work on the tail feathers next, and then I'll work on the wing. I'm going to give this whole tail a coating of the lightest color. And this is the color that's just going to give a baseline and it's not going to, um, it's not gonna be the final color. But I'm again giving it a generous coating so that whenever I add my next darker color, there will be something for it to grab onto and start moving around. So I'm going to close this back up immediately and grab my next darker color and work from the base of the tail feathers up. Okay, and I'm just touching, doing that, that feathering look. I'm touching in one place and then allowing it to just kind of flick. This is the way I have learned how to do coloring with alcohol markers. It doesn't make it the only way. So as you can see, there's already some blending going on on the base there. So then I will take the, the light color and move it back the other direction. So now I have definitely more of an ombre or a blended look. So it has definitely pulled that back the other direction. So now I'm going to go down to these last ones. I want to give this another little quick coating though. Just to make sure that the paper is saturated. And here's a look on the other side. It is bleeding through, which is anticipated. We know that's going to happen. Now instead of grabbing this marker, which is the light rich Razzleberry, I'm getting the dark rich Razzleberry. And I'm going to be very careful that I don't go up into the light area of the other, the other feathers there. Okay, so this is nice and dark. I've done those light flicking motions. Now here's my light marker again. And I'm going back the other way again and pulling that color back the other direction and it's going to make another blend. So if I wanted to use the color lifter, then the color lifter would come in and actually take away some of this color. So I'll take away some of the color on the very tip. It actually comes onto the tip and then it just kind of fades away. If you go outside of the lines and you're not comfortable with it being outside of the lines, then you can actually use the color lifter to pull that color back off too. And you can do that in several layers if, it, if it's a dark color. So we've gotten the two sections and I want the feathers to be last, the wing, um, because that's going to be probably the darkest color of my bird. Um, one thing too, while I'm thinking of it, is if you want for your, your piece of work to have a kind of a mottled look, use the color lifter to go in and just do a few little dots and pull off some of the ink in areas and it's going to give it a little bit of a natural look. I hope you can see that it is actually pulling some of that away. I'll lift this up for just a moment to make sure that you're able to see. 
And if you're just joining us, this is the Stampin' Blends markers. They are only or available to order today to demonstrators only. So if you're a demonstrator and you haven't ordered these, today is your last opportunity to do that. And if you have not joined Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator, then this is a fantastic time to order and get these in your starter kit. Your starter kit is $99. This is the ivory marker. This is not a Stampin' Up! color, but it's part of what we need to work with with Stampin' Blends. It's nice to have a mid-tone. This would be great to have in an ink pad. So because I'm working on the belly and I want there to be a little bit of a neutral tone to the belly, I'm going to give the area that is closest to the outside a nice base coat of this ivory. And I don't have to do it in any special motions at this point because I'm just filling in the area. In fact, I could use the other end, which is the brush end, and I could fill him in with the brush, maybe go a little faster. I just don't feel like I have as much control. Although the end is much more fine, it will have to be, like if I were to do the flicking motions, it would have to be very purposeful. In fact, all right, so now I'm going to have this match in with my other coloring. So I'm going to bring this light color. And here we go with the flicking again, or the feathering. And don't be afraid to go in different directions. But I hope that you can see that this pink color is in fact blending with the ivory. The ivory almost has a little bit of a brown look to it. So if you use this flicking motion when blending, it helps a little bit. So what do you guys think so far of the blend? Can you see how the pink and the ivory have blended together very nicely on the belly? This is that light rich raspberry again. And I'm gonna come underneath the wing and bring it out. So I want to give that shadow or that shaded appearance and I'm just touching the marker down and then pulling it up and out. Thanks Tanya. It says it's looking good. So I'm going to go back to my light color and I'm going to, while this is still wet, and I'm gonna blend this in. Unless you want a definite line, then you want to blend everything. Okay, and back to the flicking motion. And we have a definite blend. One thing I like about going in different directions, like if you could see that I was moving this way and then moving it this way is that I'm getting a natural look. That always makes me happy when I try to color a bird in that looks like a bird. Even if it's not in really bird colors. <laughs> We're just playing and having a good time. Okay, so this belly only needs a little bit more help and I'm going to actually use this this is the dark cherry cobbler. I want the light cherry cobbler. So I'm gonna go back into my thing here and I'm gonna find this is the light cherry cobbler. The markers, when they come to you, they're all individually wrapped. So each one of these markers is wrapped up in a, in a cellophane. And um, that's the another fun thing is you have to open every single one of these. This is actually part of a card kit, Tanya. 
I hope I saved your name right because I have a cousin named Tanya. And Tanya and Tanya is kind of spelled a little different but pronounced different too. This is a card kit that's available also for demonstrators. And we are creating this card here because it's part of the kit. And the stamp set that you can purchase along with that is called Color Me Happy. And we have stamped here with these birds. And the ink that we use to stamp with in alcohol markers is Memento. And I have Memento here. This is a water-based ink. Water-based stamp with alcohol markers. Remember, always go opposite. And if you're using your stamp and write markers, then it would be this ink here, which is not a water base. This is an archival ink, and that will go with your stamp and write markers. So now we're going to work on the wing, since that's what's left over here. And again, here's my color lifter. If I want to go in and lift off some of that color, then I can go like closer here to these, these little areas that have the the little um, the little lines and just pull some of that can you see how it actually pulled the ink back away and took it off of the paper that's not something we can do with our stamp and write markers that are dye ink this is alcohol and so that makes it different okay so now we're gonna work on the the little wing This is that ivory marker, which I can tell you already that I'm gonna be using the ivory quite a bit. I'm gonna give it a good coating, and this actually should be the end that I use. So this end actually does cover a lot of area. Keep in mind that I've only had these markers since Friday and because my family has two young children then I haven't had a whole lot of time to play with them but I do see that they they do definitely have the classic alcohol marker tendencies they're very well designed and I'm putting this back <laughs> yes Tanya it is um, the kit is nice too Okay, so this is still wet and saturated. As you can see, my area is saturated. This is paper that came in the kit, but I recommend that you use thick Whisper White cardstock when coloring. You can do it on regular Whisper White too, but it's going to have more sturdiness if you use the, um, the thick Whisper White. Okay, so now we're going to add some pink highlights because we have a pink bird. I want there to be the brown to echo the belly, but I don't want there to be um, an overabundance of pink. And this is where my personal preference is just gonna come in. I wanna show more pink on the top part of the bird feathers. And this is the fun stuff with these markers is that you get to color, you get to sit down and just put down any colors that you like. Here's that, that light rich raspberry. Now I'm gonna, the areas that are underneath these little feather things are gonna be natural shadows. So I'm going to go with the way that somebody's already taken the time and just add little bits and we're gonna do those flicking motions that's going to blend. Hi Lori. Um, yes, that's a great question. Lori is asking about the flicking motions and yes, it, what it does, and I'll do that on a scratch paper here, is when you, when you draw a straight line, you're getting a straight line. But what I want is something that's going to apply the color at the base and then not as much color as I go off. So there's more heavy color here and it, also, it, it definitely fades out. So I can get it long, I can go short, 
but the point is that it doesn't add as much color in one area as if I were to just draw a line. And having it fade and blend is the best part of these type of markers. All right, so I'm going to move to another color now and we're making sure that I work in small areas because my project has wet ink. That's going to be the best time to blend. This is that light cherry cobbler and this is going to give me my dark lights, my low lights. And I'm doing the flicking motion because that's going to give me just enough color. If I were to color solid, this is what it would look like. If I color, here's my circle, then I can go with my flicking motion and I can fade out into a much lighter color. So because I want to give this the best blend that I can, that's why I'm working with this kind of motion. It's not anything special. It's just the way that I've been able to get these to work the best in, in my experience. So now I'm going to go back the other direction and I'm going to take this is my lightest color and I'm going to pull the color back the other way. That will stop the dark color from progressing down the line and it'll keep the integrity of the highlights to the area of the low lights. And oftentimes a lighter color can work the same way that a color lifter can. So you can see that I did go over the black line here and got some of that cherry cobbler on top of where the pink goes. And that's okay. Watch how it comes away. See, it's gone. So that's going to help me get a nice even blend. Now I want to work on the transition here between the head and the wing. So I'm going to use that light again, the light rich razzleberry and just kind of put some dots that will blend out. So once you put a dot, then it just kind of fades and blends out. And that's the fun part about working with alcohol markers. If you've worked with Copic markers, these tend to be working exactly the same way. So we're just about finished with this bird here. Here's a yellow for the beak and for the feet. I'm not really worried about staying in the lines because I'll fussy cut this guy since I already messed it up. I made the decision along the way that I was going to have to fussy cut him. <laughs> and because we're blending, I'm going to add a little bit extra to the base of the beak and put a little bit of the orange and into the shadow areas of this of the feet there and if I go a little too far with it then that's when I get my my base color back and pull the color back the other way and so that takes and blends that color out so that we have a nice blend so this little bird guy right here I'll cut him out now so that you can see what he'll look like without all of the distractions Going outside of the lines when you're working with alcohol markers is not always a bad thing because you have your stamped line, but sometimes that, that white area on the outside of the stamped line can look a little bit more natural if you have some kind of color there. That's also whenever you're watercoloring. Lori is asking, do I work dark to light or light to dark? I start off with my light colors first and I saturate the area that I'm working on 
and then I go up to a medium color or a dark um, depending on how many colors I'm going to put in the area and then I definitely come back in with that light and I move the color around so let's see what this bird looks like whenever she is finished I'm gonna say it's a she because it's pink bird <laughs> so we can assume that the blue bird is the boy and the pink bird is the girl So this is from a stamp set called Color Me Happy, and it's a stamp set that is available as a companion purchase. You don't have to pick up this stamp set or the kit. You can just pick up the markers if you like. Okay, so we have one bird here. If I had a die, then that would be perfect to just be able to use the die. Now here's how this bird's gonna look in with the colors. I like how those that cherry cobbler worked in there. It definitely is um, it is some some dark low lights. We're gonna call them low lights, <laughs> and it is something that I like. Um, you're welcome, Lori. Um, it's something that I like to see is some darker areas with some lighter areas too. So let's get bird number two started. Now these are the same stamped images. It's a different image. It's with the same ink, the Memento. I'm going to put these away and bring over these guys. Now, I've got the ivory, but because this is a darker shade a, or a darker set that I've chosen, I'm using also the bronze marker. The bronze, the color lifter, and the ivory are not stamping up colors. All the other markers that are in the set, um, and you can buy all of the markers individually. You can buy them as a set of light and dark color, like, for example, uh, a light pool party and a dark pool party would come as one companion set or you can buy the entire big set with these three together there will be many purchasing options for you but just to let you know that the color lifter and the bronze and the ivory are only colors that are in this marker set these don't you can find these colors like this bronze looks kind of like uh, soft suede it reminds me of soft suede Lori is asking um, a special kind of paper. Yes, I suggest that you use thick whisper white paper, but this piece of paper is what came in the kit that we're, um, that we're using for this project. Yes, this is a heavier cardstock than the regular whisper white cardstock. It is more thick because as you use the markers, you can see that it, they will go through and it will stand up much better if you use a heavier cardstock. Hi Sarah, thanks for joining us. I'm glad to hear that you like the alcohol markers. They are so much fun. So we're gonna start on this guy over here. I'll try to move a little bit faster since this is something that we've covered a lot of the different basic techniques of coloring over here on this little girl bird here. We're gonna color the guy bird in the same way. And for those of you that are just joining, this is the Stampin' Blends markers. They are alcohol-based. There is a brush tip and a bullet tip. The brush tip actually will kind of go brushy. <laughs> That's not a real word, is it? Um, but it'll cover a larger area, as you can see, and it'll give you a fine line if you're really careful, and it does have a little give to it. But the other side is a bullet side, and it is much more firm and ha offers much more control. So I'm going to stick with the bullet side for right now and I'm gonna color in the head of the bird, not using any special um, strokes or anything, but I'm gonna go a little further deeper down into the chest. And I am being conscious to saturate the paper. 
I want the paper to be hanging on to this ink. And as it hangs on to this ink, it's going to allow the next color to come in to just disperse. It's going to it's going to take the new color and it's going to send it out and blend like magic. So I'm going to stick with the bullet end for this as well. And I'm going to do that flicking motion where I go to the outside edge, set my my bullet down just a little bit and flick it in. This is going to give me just the color that is softer on the inside and it's much more concentrated on the outside. And I can control how much pressure I put. This is something that I had to do some practice with with Copic markers and it um, was a lot of fun to see all the color blending. It even makes a little squeak if you can hear the squeak. Thanks, Rita Marie. Maria, I'm sorry, I said your name wrong. Rita Maria, beautiful name. Okay, so I'm adding just enough of that dark color and I know it doesn't look too dark, but it is the dark of the two. And back to the light and I'm gonna pull it back the other way, the reverse. And that's going to keep the integrity of the light color in the middle and bring those dark tones back to the outside. And you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I have found that I can get the best blend. All right, now we'll go and start working on the tail. And this is the light color, so I'm going to keep that light color out and I'm going to give complete saturation over here. I'm not worried about staying inside the lines because I will fussy cut this Mr. Bird. Now I'm coming over to this is the next darker. This is the dark pool party. Staying in the dark part, the shadows of the feather, I'm just going to do some flex. And then down here, well, before I go down, I need to go back the opposite direction from the tip of the tail of, the, of this actual section and pull that dark back the other direction. When it's a little bit more dry, you'll be able to see. Now this is drying and you can definitely see that there's a darker area and now back down to this part here. This is my dark. Now you can probably see. There's not too much difference between these two until you put them together. But this is the dark and the light pool party. Okay, some more of those flicks. Or you can do the little dots of color. The dots work good too because that's a controlled amount. The, the, the thing that might help you the most is to figure out what way that you can control the color blends in your own hand. Whatever works best for you is, don't worry about if it's right or it's wrong. There's no right or wrong. Now this is a different color I'm using. This is the light Bermuda Bay, which is a natural progression. You can see the three colors. This would be three colors that would be um, naturally occurring together. So I'm going to take that bullet, bullet end, and I'm going to add just to the very base of those feathers, just in some little dots, just peeping in the colors, because I want there to be light areas too. Maybe one of the feathers is a little bit underneath the other, and so it's a little darker. Don't be afraid to really get a lot of color on there too because that's what's going to blend. Paula's asking, do I prefer the brush tip or the fine point? I prefer the fine point because I can see where I can control it. The brush tip, and I'll show you again in just a few minutes. Now I'm going to blend this back the other direction. This is that light pool party for my tip of the feathers. And I'm pushing it 
back the other way. So if any of that dark color got too far beyond where I want my blend line to be, I can push it back. And as I push it back and use that flicking motion, then it's going to take that dark color and it's going to lightly just brush away some of it at an even natural progression and it will blend. Hey, Miss Karen, I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. I hope you're doing good and hello to your hubby too. I hope you guys are having a good Sunday. So now I've worked on the, the tail. I'm pretty happy with that and I'm gonna go over to the belly. And I want this bird to have a much deeper rich color. So instead of only using the ivory, I'm gonna use the bronze too. So, um, but while, before we start a new section, then Paula asked about, let me find a piece of scrap paper. Grab one off of my big shot. Do you guys always have a piece of scrap paper on your big shot? <laughs> I seem to always have one there. So here is, let's get a dark color. This is dark Bermuda Bay, and this is the bullet side, and this is the brush side. So the brush side is definitely more tapered. I can, if I'm really careful, I can get a tiny fine line out of it, but I can also get this out of it. And as, if you can see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it back the other direction this will actually kind of have some give and you can you can even get an angle where it starts on an angle but i i don't feel personally like i have as much control see i can get a little bit of that flicking but i don't have as much control in my hand these are some longer flicks i don't feel like i have as much control over this end as i do on the um, fine point. So here's the fine point. Here's what a standard line looks like with a fine point, and here's what a flick looks like. So there's not too much difference between these two. The difference that I feel is in the control of how this line, how it's going, what direction it's going to head off in. So let's pretend like this is my stamp line here. If I want to take and bring it out, then I can get that softening of the color, that graduation of this is heavier and this is lighter. Um, one way that I learned on Copics that would probably be some really great information to share with you guys is if you've got a light and a dark. Okay, and we're going to put down the light color and give it a nice good saturation. We want this to blend between the light and the darks. And one way that we can do that is with that feathering motion or that flicking motion and bring it this direction. So it's definitely giving me a heavier concentration of color down here at the base. Oh, I'm glad to hear that your pens are on order, Karen. I don't, I don't want you to miss out on getting them this time around. So I'm adding so much more color on this side and then I can get my light color and I can move in the other direction. And so what that's doing is it's pulling this color this way and it's giving myself a more easy blend. Or I can just actually do this and put down a whole long, 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 long saturated line here. And it's gonna blend this middle line somewhat can go in any motion that you feel like and then take your middle color this is your in-between and then you can work in that middle in-between color to soften where the blend is 
you know, one thing you can do to practice is to stamp a balloon and imagine where the line would be on the dark side of the shadows on the balloon versus the light part. Because there's a balloon is always a couple of different shades. So here's that dark again. Going back with the medium or the, the light one. And I'll use this brush tip this time. So there's so much actual marker on the paper right now that it's like a little swimming pool and everything is starting to blend and bleed through so nicely that I've got my little swimming pool of color and that's how I'm able to get a blend that that helps me. This is the one way that, that I found that if I actually let the color do what it's supposed to do and not be afraid of putting too much or too little onto the paper then this is what these markers are designed to do. So now I have more of a graduation of color, and of course it has completely soaked through, which is expected. That's gonna happen, so you want to use the thick paper, the thick Whisper White or thick vanilla, depending on what you're using. But this also will give you more of a blend. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. I'm not perfect either. But this is how I've been able to get them to give me a nice look. So I hope that helps to explain why I do the flicking motions and, um, and why I use the brush tip versus using the bullet tip. And you know, you can put this here. They are designed to where the tips, the, the caps are not gonna run away from you, which is really nice. So I'm going to add a nice layer of this bronze and get it get a nice heavy 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 bit of color and it will spread out it will definitely spread um, over the line if you get too close to the line this is that ivory and I'm going to bring some of that bronze and let it come over when I was a child I played a game with my um, with my neighborhood friends that was called Red Rover, Red Rover, send, we'll say Johnny, send Johnny right over. And so that always, <laughs> I always think of that game whenever I'm working with some, you know, things that blend because that's what I'm, I'm having that, that graduation of color. I'm setting it in motion to start coming over. So Red Rover, send Ivory on over. This is the light Bermuda Bay, and I'm gonna start working the shadows back the other way so that I've got these two things in common with the bird. That these two birds are gonna have this neutral tone highlight to their belly. So that in order to get the highlights onto the bird, I had to put them down first. So I'm going to use that, that bullet tip again. And I'll be, I will be doing um, some flicking, but I'm gonna start off with some little dots of color. And I don't go too close to the, to the stamped line because if I do, then it will just, the, the color will bleed over into it. It'll just run away from me. Okay, once I get enough color, So now I've got my neutral tone and I've got my darker of the colors that I was using. I'm going to come back in with a lighter shade. This was my medium tone. This is the dark pool party. And I'm gonna pull this blue, the darker blue, over into the brown. Can you see how quickly it starts to blend? can even make it go up. So I try to control the direction. And 
and at the same time it's giving me that natural mottled look because I don't want to get a fluid blend over here I'm going to go back the other direction and that's going to help me to not have um, lines almost like if I flick this direction then I want to go back and flick this direction to give that more natural look and it'll fill itself in all by itself so I think I was going this way absolutely Nancy I'm, I'm happy to share so I go both ways this way was the way I'd started and this is the way that I'm going so now I have a decent blend and I still have the highlight of the brown on the belly so I want to have those birds have that in common and this was my mid-tone this was my light so now I can actually go in and um, I could add a little bit of dark this is the dark Bermuda Bay Bermuda Bay is a wonderful color to start off with if you're thinking about um, trying out the blends but don't want to make an investment in them yet this is just in the little shadow area um, and the reason I would choose Bermuda Bay is because you have the ability to see a very concentrated dark and then a nice medium light color so I'm gonna blend out so now I have down way down in the shadow of the bird I've got a little bit of a more dark color all right so on the wing I'm going to give him some of this ivory as a base color now, I really you it's hard for me to say how much pressure I have to use to get these lids off if you already have gotten your set of markers then you understand that these lids work really well I gotta use two hands to do it I have arthritis in my hands and my shoulders and I've got to use two hands in order to really get that stuff moving all right so I'm going to give a good coating of this ivory going up into the little bit of the area of the head okay and then on the darker side of the wing I'll use a little bit of the bronze not a lot but just a little bit so that I can see that there's definitely that's on the back side of of where the bird is we want him to have a little bit of shadow and if you didn't see it earlier and you joined recently then you can see that this is one of the birds this is the same bird I made him to look like a robin on this card and now I'm going to go in with that dark blue there's also another blue in the set and that is the Knight of Navy so I'm going to go in did you see where the scribble line the lightning marks this is where I'm thinking that the feathers are or the idea of the feathers so I'm going to use the artist's roadmap to be able to say this is where I want to put my color the darker color in Okay, that's my dark I'm going to bring my light back over so that I can actually blend that out I can go back and forth or I can do this flicking motion and I can blend in go in little tiny circles whatever works for you I just don't want to take away all of that brown I want to leave some of that that highlight now if I want to pull that dark color back up away and that's when I would use my flicking motions to actually get that dark out of the paper and push it back the other direction so now in this area where the V appears I've gotten that dark color back out of it where I went over the line and then it's a little bit more pronounced over here that was my light tone now I'm going to use my medium tone and 
this is where I'm going to really start trying to make it all look like it's one part of the same bird is with this tone here. I'm going to work in some little circles to pull the color in two different directions. I'm not worried about getting too much marker on the page because when you get enough marker on the page, that's when you're going to see the blending happening. So since the colors come in twos, they come in lights and darks of the one shade, then think, you know, think outside the box and imagine how you could use and which third color you could use to make your um, custom blend. Now I'm working that medium tone back out away from where the eye is so that I can have a, a more natural progression of color. Now do you see how this brown has been pushed out over the line? That's okay. I'm going to fussy cut this bird. And the color lifter is the white marker that has no color. It's a clear fluid. It will actually pull that color back up away. So if I want to have like on the on the tip of the wing, I can use it in a line. Let's try to see what we can do with getting this brown back up. It'll pull it up to a degree, but it never makes it completely go away. But it does work very nicely with getting um, little things up off of, off of the way. Now I want to do little tiny dots to get that natural look and pick up tiny, tiny, tiny pieces of the color in different places. There's a little hair, especially in the areas that the artist has given me the landmarks on where the natural highlights are going to be. And you can start to see immediately and then it progressively shows you more after it starts to dry of where the areas are that you used your color lifter. I can see that I'm going to need to get another color lifter <laughs> because it's going to be something that we we need to use a lot of. And then I can you can see how it pulled that brown up off the paper. I'll do it over here too to do to get some of this blue where I ran over the line on the blue. If you feel like you're getting a little extra on here, then do like a blender pen and just kind of get it off onto your working surface. Okay, and I'm going to use this yellow for the beak. This is the same yellow that I used. And on the little legs. I'm not afraid to put too much because I know that if I put enough, that's going to give me the blend. It's when you don't use enough that there's a little bit trouble of blending. Now this is where I'm going to do a little bit, just little tiny pieces, little dots of color, or you can do the flick. If you are curious as to where I learned some of the techniques that I'm using today, I took one of the courses for Copic markers from online card classes. And that's the classes from um, Christina Werner and Jennifer McGuire. So they will, they will go into the basics and give the reasons why things happen. And I believe there's like maybe four or five different teachers that they have brought in and they give you a series of things to try and um, practice sheets and stuff like that. It's a, it's a wonderful resource. Cheryl, what are you doing awake? <laughs> Paula, can you knock on Cheryl's door and tell her to go to sleep? <laughs> because you guys should way be asleep by now, shouldn't you? 
these are my friends um, over in the South Pacific. Yes, Karen. Karen is saying that Jennifer McGuire is wonderful, and I agree 100%. She has such a resource that she shares freely with everybody that it's very inspiring. She's very, very talented, very talented girl. Okay, so we're just fussy cutting this because it's a lot easier for me to use the paper that's at hand to demonstrate something. So I made a big mess on on the paper that came from the kit. On the kit, they're showing that you should um, stamp and then color on a pre pre cut piece of sheet of um, paper. But I chose to use that paper I was working on as an example on how to do some different uh, types of blending. So that's why we're fussy cutting. So if you have the kit or if you're going to be getting the kit, then you don't need to feel like you have to follow exactly what the directions are for the card layout. You can, you can do it however you like. You don't have to fussy cut it either. You can, you can go with however your your design takes you. This is a tiny little piece here. I'm almost finished with that. Okay. Yay, we have two birds. And here was an example of going from a dark shade, such as here, to a light shade. And this is what you can do with your blends. You can get your dark color and your light color and you can blend them together. And as it dries up, it looks a little bit better. Oh, it's not too early for you then, Cheryl. I'm happy to find you here too. That's wonderful. I wouldn't want you to get up too early though. Oh, but it's a Monday morning for you, isn't it? It's still Sunday afternoon here. My kids are still having a nap. It's four in the afternoon. So for you guys that are just joining us, we are working with this kit. This is the Color Me Happy Project Kit. And we're using the companion stamp set, which is Color Me Happy. And this has nice open line drawings for us to use for the Stampin' Blends markers. And the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers are still available in the United States to order until the end of the day. So if you would like to order these markers, then you can get them in your starter kit. They're only available for demonstrators. Then you can go over to my website at jennystampsup.com and click on Join My Team. Or if you have a demonstrator that you currently work with, then you should contact your demonstrator and tell them that you would like to join for the discount and you can get these markers in your starter kit. This is the colors that they come in and we'll put this card together in just a few minutes, but I wanted to go over this really quickly. These are United States dollars. So if you're in another country or in a different market, then this is a United States flyer and these are the cost. It's $121.50 for the entire set. That's 26 markers that include those three extra markers. And then the kit is $25. And the stamp set depends on which one you want. I like the, I like the clear mount. I don't prefer the wood mount. And um, you can get those in a bundle and get 10% off. So other things you might need to go with them are... Tuxedo Black. You need to use this type of ink when you use alcohol markers. And also some thick cardstock would help you out really nicely too. Tanya is in New Zealand too. So Tanya and Paula, you guys know each other, don't you? So we're going to finish putting this card together. This is where, since I've already gone off the road map on how to put this card together, I can go off in a really crazy direction now. So I'm gonna use another one of these pieces that came in the kit. The kit is showing me that this is what I wanna to try to go for. So they're having the birds on the paper, like so. 
and then we need to get a couple of extra pieces which I have over here I like how Stampin' Up's kits come ready to use they want you to be able to go in and just have a good time this is going to be the matching envelope that we use this one according to the kit and see the nice gold colors on it Judy is asking when the they will be available to customers we don't have a date yet I'm just making an educated guess and saying that they will be available around Christmas time to customers because I can see that this would be a wonderful thing that we could ask for on our Christmas list. I, I and again, that's an educated guess. That's not that's not anybody. No information from Stampin' Up. I just think it would be nice for people to have on their um, on their Christmas list. And the other thing I need is some sequins, and I need to have a scrap of white paper. I wonder if I already have a piece. So one of the other projects that I made that you can see here, if you didn't see earlier, is I made the bird into a robin. Here we go. This is what it looks like in the blue one, and this is the robin that I made. And this was when I got it on Friday, when I got the kit. I just started playing with the markers so that I could see exactly what they could do. Aha, here it is, I looked for this earlier. And here's some blending that I tried out on the same day. This robin was actually here on the paper. I stamped off a bunch of the images just to try them out. And I have a piece of white here. So we're going to stamp off the greeting. Paula can give you the price in, in your own currency, Tanya. Definitely. I'm sure she would be happy to help you with that. I'll leave this out in case you care to look at it. This is the this is the, the, the coloring that I did on my own. I'll stack these up. I do like how these birds Stampin' Up had the the pink and the blue. I do like how they came out with the how the colors work together. And the fact that they both have that brown in common is give them that common color tone. So I'm going to use my little block and I'll use the same black ink pad since it was already out here. Make sure, I'm just going to lift it up and look and make sure that I get a good color, a good coverage of black. This is a solid stamp in most of the area and I did discover when I used it on Friday that I had to really, really add that ink to make sure that I get a full nice coverage. If you have a stamp on a jig, that would be a good thing um, for you to use your stamp on a jig with. There we go. And of course, this is a whole lot of ink, so I'm not going to put my fingers on it. So that would be a repeat after me. Don't put my fingers in the ink. And then that's when I would put my finger in the ink. <laughs> okay, and I'm not going to try to make this where it's only the black. I like to have the little white border around it. I think it's okay. So we're going to adhere these guys down and I'll use some liquid glue or some glue dots. Glue dots are a lot easier for me because I can just do this and not worry about getting glue all over my fingers.
Here's the two birds. It might help if I put this out so I can see exactly what I'm supposed to look like. Aha! We're going to add the twine. This is when you can take off in your own direction. We have a little bit of these gorgeous sequins. Gorgeous. Look at how they're see-through. Make sure you can see. Look at those. They are amazing. The kit's worth it just for the sequins. That's the first thing that I noticed whenever I um, whenever I saw the picture of of this kit. So, what do you guys think of the blends so far? Oh, I don't want to take that. I am really, really digging the blends. I'm going to follow the design of the kit and put this little twine over in this direction. I hope you like them, Judy. Have you used Copic markers before? If you have any experience with Copic markers, then that will give you a very good idea of what to expect. If you have not used Copic markers before, then when you get your blends, be sure to give yourself loads of time to just play and not expect to use anything on a project. Just play and have a good time until you feel like they're comfortable in your hand. That's that's the reason why I feel like that bullet nib is com more comfortable in my hand. Um, I have more control over it. Here we go. Now I'm going to add this pretty little flash. Ah, good thinking, Judy. Judy was waiting for Stampin' Up! to come out with them. Now, there has been some chatter about how Stampin' Up! had the Stampin' um, blend abilities in the past, and those were also great markers, but they are definitely designed differently than these markers are. The physical design is not the same. It could be the same solution inside. I, I can't answer that question. It could be, but it is not the same um, outside, out housing. That's the word I'm looking for is housing. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to add this down on the side. I'm kind of going by what this has. And I'm going to use more liquid glue. No, I'm not. Because this is a foil. So I want to go back to glue dots. If I can find my glue dots. And these are nice large sequins, so I'll show you the best way that I like to adhere large sequins. And this is going to go at an angle, according to here. And now we're going to add some gorgeous sequins. So when you have a sequin that's large enough, you can take it directly to the glue dot, put it on there, pull it off, no glue is required and it's on perfectly. You can't see the glue dot around the sequin. It's a beautiful cupped sequin. And I'm going to add a star too. 
just because I want to bring that gold out around. The, the star is not quite as large as the sequin is, or if it's a, a fancy shape, then you can always take and fold the glue dot in half or in quarters or however works for you and be able to put it down to your card. And then if you feel like it's a little too sticky, then one of my tricks is you grab it I use my embossing buddy to come over, tap it a little bit, which deactivates the adhesive, rub off the extra, and now we have a completely non-stick glue dot on the part that's exposed. And that's my embossing buddy from my online Stampin' Up! store. Everybody has their little tips and their own little tricks on how they do things, which is, I think, part of the great stuff that we do with Stampin' Up. So this is the cutest little card. This is a nice little note card. It can be used for any kind of different um, occasion. I will probably retie this bow just to get it to be more in proportion with the actual size of the greeting. This is what the card kit in the entirety looks like. And this is the stamp set again. This is Color Me Happy. And here are all of the beautiful Stampin' Blends, minus the components of the card kit. <laughs> and the colors that they come in with are beautiful. Here's the remainder of the markers. There's a lot of different chatter about how to store the markers. Right now I have them inside this bin just because it's easy for me to grab it and go from one place to another. There's uh, lots of different possibilities. One way is wooden stamp kits or the stamp boxes. This is empty boxes that demonstrators can order. Um, I believe customers can order them as well and they are just the right size to be able to put markers on either side so this is one way that i have done it but i and i do like the way that i can store them but it's a stamp case and i found online uh, someone had given a free resource on how to put a label so that's one way to do it another way is to use a um a plastic or a plexiglass cook cube, if I can say it, a cube um, that has a, an X divider and be able to put it, put your markers in. But the important thing to remember is not to store your markers standing, but to store them laying down because that will control the flow of the fluid inside to be at an even level instead of all the fluid going to one level and not the other level. So thank you guys for joining me today. I am really appreciative that you took the time out. So many of you have joined me here and I will make sure that this video is available to watch in its entirety if you joined a little bit after we started. I am a demonstrator and I'm in the United States. So if you have any questions that I can help you with on the Stampin' Blends, for the United States, then I am happy to help you. That you can order these markers today. Today is the very last day that you can order them. This is the name of them. They're stamp and blends and they are alcohol markers. Today is the very final day that you could get them in your starter kit. So if you are interested in getting these and if you want to join um, Stampin' Up! and get the starter kit, Stampin' Up! has made it possible for you to get these markers in your starter kit. So you can join my team to be a demonstrator or to be a hobbyist or just to get a starter kit and then have no more participation at all. It's completely your choice. But if you go to my website at JennyStampsUp.com 
you can click on the sidebar where it says join my team and that will zip you over to the Stampin' Up! website where you join as a demonstrator and get the $99 starter kit. Once you start selecting your items, you will see that you get to choose from $125 worth of product, not $99. It costs you $99, but you get to choose from $125 worth of product. You can choose these markers, the entire large complete set, for $121.50. So that would still leave you a couple of dollars to be able to choose from other items, even from the clearance rack. Um, if you have any questions that I can answer for you directly, you can email me today at jennystampsup at gmail.com and I will help you to be able to sign up. Um, or if you just have some questions, I'll be happy to answer your questions. But if you would like to join my team and choose these markers or other items, I'm, I welcome you to my team. I have a non-geographical team, which means we are from the west coast of the US to the east coast and everywhere in between. And if you would like for me to walk through the process with you, then that's not a problem. I can give you a call on the phone and I will be there and walk you through the process of joining. Um, I'm happy to help. So thanks again for joining me today. I'm sorry that my boy Trip didn't get to say hello to everybody, but he's having a rest, which is part of the reason why I chose this time so that I would be able to actually do something to show you guys <laughs> because he, otherwise he would take over the show. It would be the trip show. So here is the envelope that goes with the card. Here's the card, and I can actually color in on this as well. So this is a nice gift, a nice thought that you can send somebody. And you see how the beautiful gold on the envelopes works so nicely together. It's, it's a really nice gift. It's a, it, you could put a gift card in here, you, lots of different possibilities. Rita Maria is saying thank you for the useful tips and the information and the complete demo. You are more than welcome, Rita Maria. And Judy is saying thank you, thank you so much. You are welcome, I'm happy to, sh to share, it's my pleasure. And here's again a quick look at how the blends work. This is where I was just doing my own um, playing with them just to see how I could get them to blend. So if you have any questions, then you know how to contact me. And until next time, I will leave you with saying have a great Sunday, or if it's already Monday in your world, then have a great week and a great Monday. So everybody take care. God bless you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.